back to my channel. I'm Maxine and today I'm going to be doing uh, the first video of its kind. I'm going to be doing a book review. Um, this is a book that I've mentioned in the past before as a book that I found really helpful so I just thought I would sum it up for you guys and um, I guess do a little book review. My friend Zita um, also suggested this idea. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, it is rather hot today. The fan is right under the camera so if you hear any ambient fan noises that's what it is. Anyway so this is the book I'm going to be reviewing. It's Skin Cleanse by Adina Gregore. First things first, um, who is Adina Gregore? She is the owner and founder of SW Basics, a natural skincare line. You can find this skincare line at Target. I think they started selling it a few years ago. Also she has a background as a nutritionist and a personal trainer. This book overall is about how to take care of your skin or how to sort of maximize your skin's potential through um, basically diet and topical stuff. She really takes a holistic view of skincare, sort of like you are what you eat from the inside out kind of thing. And generally the tone of the book and um, the message of the book really reminded me a lot of what my mom has been telling me for the past at least a few years that your skin is equipped to heal itself and to take care of itself. Um, you don't have to slather on 15 different products every day to um, sort of help it along. So in the very beginning of the book, Adina talks about her own history with skincare issues. She said for many years she had issues with migraines, breakouts, and rashes. She really tried anything and everything under the sun to sort of fix the issues. One day she decided just to cut everything out. So she stopped using all her skincare products. She basically went cold turkey on all her skincare products, bath products and everything. And then she saw pretty much immediate results according to her. Um, her symptoms went away and then from there she rebuilt um, her skincare routine. through the chapters chronologically summarizing what they're about she does talk about um, basically a skin detox and a diet detox in this book altogether there are eight chapters in this book there's 237 pages but if you subtract the index the acknowledgements and things like that it's 218 pages so pretty much a very very easy to read engaging um, quick read basically and very informational. Chapter one is called Your Amazing Skin. In this first chapter she outlines the science of your skin, the different layers, she defines some terms, and ultimately she reminds you that your skin is also an organ just like your kidney and your liver and we have to treat it as such. You know your body best and everyone is different so you should um, sort of customize the advice that she gives in this book. Chapter two is called You Are What Your Great Grandmother Ate. In this chapter, she sort of goes further into that whole idea of you know your body best. She says that there are three main factors to take into consideration when it comes to your skin. First one is your background, your genetics, your biological background, maybe some of the customs and habits that are ingrained in your family history and things like that. Second factor is your lifestyle, so where you live, um, your job, your amount of stress, pollution, things like that. And the third factor, which she thinks is the most important, is your diet. It's really how the three factors intersect in your own life that will determine sort of what works best for you. For example, if you're vegan, you might not be able to follow certain things that are recommended by nutritionists out there. And maybe if you are lactose intolerant due to your genetics, obviously take that into consideration as well. Chapter three is called Your Body Needs You. There she goes into a few things that might damage your skin. She talks about hormonal imbalance, inflammation, glycation, and free radicals. Hormonal imbalance and inflammation are kind of self-explanatory. We know quite a bit about it. And as a lot of us know now, free radicals are unpaired electrons that don't know what to do with themselves because they don't have a match. So they cause a lot of cellular damage. And she says to eat more vitamins like vitamin C and E and beta carotene to combat free radicals. Now the one term that I didn't know about before reading this book was glycation. It's when your body tries to process 
like an influx of sugar and then the sugar molecule I think bonds with a fat or protein molecule without an enzyme to control the reaction between it. Apparently it creates something called an AGE, age, which is kind of funny, which is an advanced glyc glycation end product. And then of course your body doesn't know what to do with this and it wreaks havoc in your body. Adina says that glyc glycation happens a lot when you're cooking um, animal proteins in high temperatures. I guess charring is something that causes glycation. Also in this chapter, she introduces the idea of a food journal. She says not to go overboard with it. Typically a food journal is used as a tool to sort of learn more about your body and your habits and things like that. She kind of discourages people from doing it for more than two weeks. So she says do it at least for three days preferably a week and as long as two weeks. It's pretty self-explanatory. Write down everything that goes into your mouth and your body's reaction to these foods. So if you notice anything unusual, like maybe a pimple or stomach pains or something, make a note. And then she says to look for patterns. Of course, if you notice that eating dairy is causing you to have pimples, that's probably something that you should be cutting out. Any behavior that occurs more often than you would like, maybe alcohol or a lot of carbs or something, that she says is also a red flag. From this food journal, she encourages an elimination diet. So any of the foods that you think cause any symptoms or anything like that, you should eliminate from your diet and then one by one reintroduce them. As you're reintroducing them, wait three to four days and then reintroduce another one. So you're really doing it quite slowly so you can figure out what exactly is causing your symptoms. And then she says, if you do eliminate any particular foods, you should find a replacement so you're not craving it or missing it a lot. It's also in this chapter that she says that cheese and dairy products really cause a lot of trouble for people. It is an ultimate culprit for pimples and acne and things like that. I mean, I've heard that before and I just, I, I believe it maybe, but I think I'm going to choose to ignore that advice personally speaking. And chapter four is called Eat Like Your Skin Depends On It. She basically goes into detail about what foods are great for your body, what foods are terrible for your body, and then she makes lists for each category. It's, it's pretty well-known knowledge if you are any in any way like a health nut or if you read any like health magazines. Basically, greens are great for you, healthy fats like coconut oil and olive oil. She says use full fat butter, organic. She stresses that organic foods are really, really better for you, um, especially if you're gonna be eating the peel of the fruit. She also stresses that fat is absolutely necessary to maintaining a healthy diet. A lot of people will cut all fat out and she says that that's not a good idea. Your body needs fat. Bad foods, very self-explanatory. Processed or packaged foods are her like biggest one that she, she says do not touch. She says something that I don't know if I agree with. She says you shouldn't be eating meat more than twice a week. Um, eh. Chapter 5 is called The Beauty Industry is Ugly and she has some experience um, working in selling skincare. She basically says that the FDA is very limited in what it really oversees in terms of skincare and that there are a lot of loopholes and insider dealings and things like that. Basically she says you should really read the labels yourself and use your own judgment when it comes to whether something is natural or something you want to put on your face. She talks a lot about specific ingredients and then she talks about how you can recognize a natural ingredient versus something that's a derivative. According to her in every labeling system, if you have a natural ingredient the common name will be in parentheses after the scientific name. So you can see if it's um, like seaweed or something, it's gonna say seaweed. Now she says if it's a derivative of seaweed or coconut oil, it's gonna say derived from or a product of. While these aren't bad, you should definitely watch out for them because they are chemically altered a lot of times and they're not really natural. Okay, that brings us to chapter 6, which is the skin cleanse chapter. Here she encourages you to do a product journal. It's not as stringent and strict as the food journal, but she wants you to track every single thing that comes in contact with your skin for three to seven days. Anything, including pets, hand sanitizer, everything. Dish soap, 
everything. And then she wants you to just write down any reactions or symptoms you have to anything and look for patterns again. And she has sort of instructions for um, a three-step skin cleanse, like level one for someone who really isn't into it too much, and then um, level three for someone who really wants to get to the bottom of their skincare issues. Level one should be about three days and try to use all natural things on your face and maybe your body if you have body skin issues. And then she encourages you to use some of the recipes that she includes her, in her book, which I think is probably one of the highlights of her book. She does include quite a few recipes here. It's like a whole, I would say about 30 to 40 pages of recipes. And then she has some like food cooking recipes in the food section of the book. Level two is just one day. Absolutely don't use any makeup and or any facial products at all. No face wash, no moisturizer, no toner. She just tells you to wash your face with plain water. Level three is anywhere from three days to two weeks where you're not using any products on your skin, including your body. No body wash, no soap. I don't know, it sounds intense to me. She said if you have to wash, use Castile soap. And then level four is returning to your daily routine. Unlike the food elimination diet, she doesn't sort of tell you to reintroduce products one at a time. She kind of assumes that you're gonna know what products don't work for your skin by that point. And then one interesting thing that she says that I had always wondered about is she says there's no such thing as basically like a purging period. Um, if your skin doesn't like it to start with, then it's never gonna like it. So that was an interesting tidbit. Chapter 7 is called Be Your Own Apothecary. This is where she lists all her recipes, um, skincare recipes. And I think if you really want to do a clean, homemade DIY sort of skincare routine, I highly recommend this section and this book. And then chapter 8 is I Still Have Questions, where she answers a lot of questions about specific issues and things like that. I think the first time I read it, like a light bulb went off in my head. I mean, I always think of my skin as a part of my um, body, an organ, I know that. And that's why I kind of jumped into the whole like natural product thing to begin with a few years ago. If I want to lead a healthier lifestyle, it's not only what you put into your body, but what you put on your body as well. So that was just like a, a nice reminder. I really liked her holistic view on skincare, which is another thing we know, but we don't really know. I think a lot of Western medicine separates like do this for your kidney, do this for your heart, but it's one body, it's one system. With self-help books, I kind of take them with a grain of salt. I sort of, I mean, I think this is something that probably all of us do in every aspect of our lives, but I take from it what I find useful and then I discard things that I don't necessarily think fit into my lifestyle and Adina does talk about that. She constantly reminds the reader that the reader knows their body best, knows what works for them and what doesn't. So these are just tips to help you sort of figure out faster maybe some things that aren't working for you but ultimately you do you. Another thing that she talks about in this book um, in passing is marketing and the beauty industry. Her view is that there really isn't such a thing as combination skin or normal skin or dry skin or oily skin. They're all, according to her, marketing terms to try to get you to buy certain types of products. So she believes that oily skin is not really that oily and the more you use products geared towards oily skin, the more your skin produces those oils because you're drying it out. Um, and then your body is like overproducing oil to make up for it. I kind of believe that. I do believe that the skin is um, built to heal itself in many ways and to take care of itself. All these topical treatments that we're putting on our skin to sort of use as a quick fix, um, Adina is basically trying to say that's not the solution and the solution comes from the inside out, which I think all of us kind of know but we don't necessarily follow because we buy into the marketing. Ultimately, what do I think about this book? I think this is a fantastic reference book, especially if you want to have something handy that's relatively small that um, outlines what foods you should be eating more of, um, what the nutrients these foods provide, recipes for um, drinks and snacks and foods, and like 30 plus pages of 
skincare recipes. I think anyone who's interested in a healthier lifestyle, especially when it comes to your skin, this is a great read for every person who's interested in that. Some of the Amazon reviews said that she doesn't really say anything new. No, if you're really well versed in this kind of stuff already, it's not gonna be new. Good self-help books, I feel, present information I already know in the back of my mind in an easy to follow way so that I can sort of, you know, incorporate those tips and, and, and ideas into my everyday life. This isn't really that much about eating. Even though she talks a lot about how your diet influences your skin and your health, it's not really a clean eating book. So it, it's one chapter devoted to diet. Um, I would look into purchasing or reading a separate clean eating book if that's what you're looking for. Alright, I hope this video was helpful. If you've read it, let me know what you thought of the book. Let me know what you think about book reviews and if there are any books you want me to read and review. Otherwise, thanks for watching and for subscribing and I'll see you next time.